All right, so this is edition one of my advanced landscape material. Uh, so basically uh, what this material is, is it utilizes Substrate, which is Unreal Engine's uh, latest material editing uh, tool. And what Substrate allows you to do is essentially have uh, multiple layers within the same material that can each have different uh, shading models. So you can have one layer that has subsurface scattering, one that doesn't, one that's translucent, and you can combine those all in the same material. Uh, this is great for landscapes because uh, obviously there are multiple layers with this. And let's say we wanted to have snow, ice, rocks like I do in this scene. The snow would have some nice subsurface scattering, the rocks would not, and the ice would, but only in little tufts of snow that are showing up on top of it. And I'll show you that in a second. That's one of the reasons I decided to make this a uh, example using uh, snow, ice, and rocks because it gives a nice um, uh, example of what this material can do. Another thing this material is doing is utilizing nanite displacement. So this essentially allows you to turn the landscape actor into an anite asset. And then the nanite asset can then be um, uh, uh, displaced. So using all that extra geometry, and you can get a very nice uh, displacement from that. So if I move down here, you can see that everything in this is actually um, displaced. It also gives you a nice silhouette, unlike parallax occlusion mapping. So in order to make sure all this works, um, is you want to make sure that you have um, uh, virtual texturing enabled, because this material is set up to use virtual texturing, which allows you to do some uh, cool stuff such as uh, blend uh, meshes with the landscape actor uh, materials and stuff like that. So in order to do that, you would go into um, uh, Edit Project Settings, type in virtual texturing at the top, and you want to make sure that you enable virtual texture support, and then enable virtual texture light maps. And then you also want to make sure that you enable substrate. So if you go into the project settings and type in substrate, you want to make sure you enable substrate materials and substrate advanced visualization shaders. Once you do that, you can restart the editor and those features will be functional and everything for this material will work correctly. Another thing you want to do is once you create your landscape actor, uh, you can just create it like normal. You want to make sure that you go into the uh, landscape details and then go under Nanite, and then enable Nanite. Once you do that, you want to build data. Once all that's done, then everything will work um, as expected. Okay. So as you can see in this scene, I've got uh, a snow uh, uh, texture set being used for the entire landscape. And then I also have a variation of the snow landscape, uh, which is just these kind of uh, ruts and lumps that stick up out a little bit more than the uh, standard uh, snow surface. You can see that all over here. And I've also got um, some ice over here. And then the ice also has these little tufts of snow on it that are also displaced using nanite displacement, which you can see here. So those are getting subsurface scattering as well, but the lake itself is not, or the frozen lake. And then I've also got these uh, rocks that are jutting out from the surface here. And once again, all this is using uh, nanite displacement. And you can also see the blend into the snow material. This is all blending uh, via height map information. So it has a very nice blend. And you can also adjust in the material how, um, how much contrast the blend has, the fall off, all that good stuff, and some other uh, cool adjustments, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, another thing you may notice with the snow is it also has these nice sparkles or flecks. This is also uh, something that is allowed by using substrate. Right? And you can also tweak those values. You can enable and disable it per layer, all that good stuff. And you'll see here that the lake does not have the flex. If I wanted to enable it on the lake, I could. I could also enable it on the rocks, but currently it's disabled. Um, and it's only on the uh, two snow layers. Okay. And you'll see that nice height blending going on uh, between all the layers. And if you look over here, there's actually a little bit of ice peeking through the snow. So this is just somewhere where I just slightly um, uh, dabbed the uh, uh, layer paintbrush. So it's giving me a little bit of the ice coming through, but I still wanted the snow over the top of it just to add a little variation. And then you can see here, it's just uh, blending in nicely with everything. Cool. So I want to show you the material instance for this. So the material instance is laid out very clean and organized. Um, and I'm using a similar system to all my uh, latest uh, asset packs. They'll all be using this uh, system. So um, we start off with the textures. So if we go through here, you can see we have albedo. We have our metallic roughness ambient inclusion height, which is channel packed. So you have this uh, channel packed in the RGB and alpha channels. And then we have our normal texture. So you're basically taking uh, six textures and uh, combining them into three using channel packing. And then um, the reason for this is for efficiency. It also gives you less assets to have to work with. 
and um, it reduces file size, all of that good stuff. And you can obviously um, utilize uh, channel packing through any major uh, texture authoring uh, software out there. So you can see we have our layer one, we have our layer two, three, and four. Each one of them has a uh, three texture, uh, texture set. So another thing with this is that these are all laid out in the order in which they're laid out in the content browser by default, as you can see here. You can see albedo, MRAH, and normal. And it's laid out the same way here, just vertically. So this makes it uh, easier to kind of uh, correlate the textures and how you're putting the layers and all that good stuff. The next section is uh, tiling and rotation. So if I go in here and let's say I want to rotate around one of my layers, um, and to easily see, I, I've named the layers one, two, three, and four just to make it easy. Because um, if I went and labeled them something less generic like grass and rock and all that stuff, you'd have to modify the material. So it just makes more sense to make them uh, one, two, three, and four layer. But an easy way to see which um, uh, texture set is for which layer. You can just go into your textures and see which one correlates, right? So my rocks, for example, I can tell here by looking at the albedo are layer two. So if I want to go in and rotate those, um, I can just go into layer two or let's say adjust the tiling, right? I can go in and do that, right? So I can make the tiling larger or smaller. Now the tiling, um, or sorry, the displacement is tile uh, dependent. So if you go in and let's say you start uh, tiling the surface, it will automatically adjust the displacement intensity to keep the height, uh, the same relative height that it was based on the tiling. So that way your tiling will always, uh, or your height will always make sense uh, when you adjust your tiling. You don't have to tile it and then adjust the height. It's um, all uh, dependent on, or it's all relational to the tiling value, right? Now I can also go in and rotate that layer, obviously. So I have uh, layer uh, one, two, three, and four tiling layer one, two, three, and four rotation, and then rotation center for all those layers as well. This basically tells it where to do the rotation. If, uh, you know, 0.5 is going to be in the center of the uh, uh, texture. If it's uh, one or zero, it's going to be at the corners of that texture. So if I go into rotation for layer uh, two, which is going to be my rocks, you can see how those rotate around. I can also manually type in values so uh, and get whatever I want out of that. Set that back to the default. Now, one thing you'll also notice when I make any of these adjustments, let's say I go back and adjust the tiling, for example, um, the shadows don't update in real time like they're supposed to. And if you get these like weird glitching when we back and forth, this is just a result of uh, nanite displacement. And uh, the only way to really get around this is once you're done making a change, you can just shift the object and then Control Z to move it back, and it'll update. Um, it's just a side effect of using um, nanite displacement. So I'm going to go back and do that. Okay, if I go down to displacement, you can see that I have our uh, displacement values. So um, we have a displacement center value, and then we have a, a uh, displacement height. And then whether or not the displacement is bidirectional. So by default, I do have it set up to be bidirectional. Basically, this means instead of just moving from the black value of the height map up to the white value, it will actually... Uh, raise and lower. So it'll pull the black value down and raise the white value up from the center point of the height map. This will give you a more accurate um, visual hull for the um, offset and also avoid some uh, visual glitches. But then also when you are when you have a character like walking on the ground and all that good stuff, um, the collisions are going to be a little bit um, more uh, easy to deal with. And everything will just work a little bit better uh, by doing that. So um, bidirectional is enabled by default. If you want to disable that, you can. And if I want to go in and adjust the displacement center, this is basically where the displacement is happening, uh, where in the height map, right? So one being white, zero being black, and anything in between being a, somewhere in between. So uh, 0.6 for this layer seemed to work very well. The default is 0.5. And then you also have the displacement height, obviously. So this is going to adjust how much the surface displaces. So for this layer, uh, 0 0.03 seemed to work very well. And once again, keep in mind these displacement values are relative to the tiling value. So if I tile this way down, the height would be proportionally the same, or relationally the same based on the uh, tiling value. Okay, another uh, uh, parameter I have in here is going to be the layer blend, uh, blend parameter. So we have the ability to invert the uh, height map for the blending. Um, so Basically, when it blends in, you want to use an inverted height map because you want it to blend more naturally. But there might be instances where you want it to blend over the top of an object or a surface. So if you uncheck this and it blends from the top, you can see how that adjusts how it blends, right? 
Um, so that's with it not inverted, and that's with it inverted. So you can see it looks more natural this way. This is more you had to expect snow to, or any other asset to blend in with another surface. But if you want to do it uh, this way, you can. It's just giving extra options. You also have the blend contrast. Essentially what this is going to do is tighten up the uh, blend ratio between the surfaces. So basically the amount of gradation uh, between the layers. Now another cool feature that this has is the um, uh, animation. So you can basically animate each layer. Uh, it's basically using uh, UNV coordinates. So if I go in here and let's say I want to move, uh, let's say I want to move this um, rock, right? I can go in and give it a value. Let's do a very small value. You can see it moving. And it'll still uh, maintain its blend um, with the outer layers. So it's still blending in with the height map, doing everything you expect it to do. Now, obviously, there are very fringe use cases for this, but I always like to include this, um, the ability to do this animation um, with all of my materials. Whether or not you're going to use it is up to you, but the, the ability to do it is in there. Something that would make a little bit more sense for this would probably be for the uh, frozen lake surface, which is layer 4. So if I go in and let's say it'd be 0.1, or maybe 0 0.05, then I can have, you know, this... Uh, frozen lake, or maybe this is like sheets of ice, you know, sliding underneath, um, you know, you can do some cool stuff with this. But anyway, um, once again, very uh, fringe use case, but the uh, ability is there. Now, surface is going to allow you to control everything for how the surface looks. So this is going to cover things like uh, roughness values, flattening the normals, the adjustment for the glints, um, the uh, index of refraction for the subsurface scattering, the subsurface color, subsurface intensity, all that stuff, which you can see over on the side there. So I'll show you an example of this on the snow. So the snow, uh, this is layer one. This currently has a um, uh, subsurface uh, color attached to it, as you can see here. So layer one, uh, three, and four. So basically both snow layers and the ice layer have a subsurface value. Um, and then you can see the roughness uh, for layer one, all that good stuff. So if I go in and tweak the roughness, for example, uh, if I go in and tweak this roughness value, you can see how that affects the uh, surface, and it also affects the uh, spread of those glints on the surface because they're tied in together. And let's say I go over to my uh, layer 2, which is these rocks over here. And let's say I want to make them a little bit more shiny. I can bump that up, as you can see here. Or I can bring that back down and make them completely rough if I wanted to. Okay. So this is essentially taking the uh, roughness map and then just uh, adjusting the, uh, the values of it. And over here, we have the uh, glint intensity. So you can see the glints on the surface, those little specular values. I can bring those all the way down to nothing. And you can see the only layers that uh, have them right now are going to be the uh, secondary snow layer. So I'm going to bring those back in. And then it gives it a nice uh, glint on the surface. Okay. We also have the index of refraction. So the index of refraction is basically going to control how light transmits through the surface using subsurface scattering. So uh, the default value, I believe, is 0 0.04, or 0 0.4. And then if I turn it off uh, subsurface scattering, for example, this would basically be the surface without any um, subsurface scattering, no glints, no anything. So this is basically just looks very uh, drab and boring. So you can see how big of a difference this makes. So I'm going to go back and enable the glint intensity. I'm going to uh, re-enable the subsurface intensity as well. And you can see how big of a difference that makes. I'm also going to set the index of refraction back to 1.3, which is uh, more accurate to what snow should be. And it's also the default for IOR, uh, for my material instance. So now if I go into subsurface color, I can adjust what the color is coming through the surface. right? So as the light comes through, what color that should turn into. For the snow, I'm obviously using a nice little uh, blue color, but you could make this any color that you like. Uh, depending on uh, what your art direction is. And I've also got subsurface intensity. So you can see if I bring that down to zero, there's no subsurface scattering, and I can slowly bump it up as much as I want, or bump it all the way up. right? So I can adjust that however I like. And once again, this depends on uh, what your uh, use case is. So for something like ice, for example, you might want a lower subsurface scattering intensity than something uh, like snow. So that's everything for the material instance itself. And now on the uh, landscape actor, I will show you uh, how it works when you go in and paint the layers. So everything is set up to work uh, normally, right? So you have your uh, uh, layers here. You can go in and select them. 
So you can go into your, your surface and paint it however you like. So you can select whatever layer, let's say I'm selecting layer one, and you can see it's going to blend in and it will do it based on the height information, right? Let's say I want to add some uh, rocks in here jetting out a little bit. I can go and do that. And you can see it's uh, slowly moving away. Now, because of the shadowing issue with uh, nanite tessellation while you're doing editing, um, a lot of times I'll work in unlit just to kind of see how things are working without the weird shadows kind of getting involved. And then once I'm done, I'll go in and move it so it updates correctly. And then you can see how this looks um, on the surface. And you can see how the blends are happening, right? And then maybe I'll add a little bit of ice over here. And obviously, you can just dabble the brush a little bit, and uh, you can get some really cool effects going through the ice, or coming through the snow. Then I can go back and set this to lit. I can go back into my uh, standard selection mode. Anytime you do any edits and you're kind of happy with the work, you want to go into your uh, landscape actor and just hit rebuild data. That'll update the uh, nanite tessellation data. And we'll move this back here. And then uh, you can see that those updates I did um, are there. And then if I go into lit here and go into nanite visualization and show triangles, you can see what this looks like on the surface. So this is what uh, Unreal Engine is doing to this nanite surface. It's creating a bunch of, uh, of highly dense geometry for that landscape actor and then utilizing the height information to offset it. And this is the end result. So you can see we get nice, very finely detailed height information across the entire surface and it all blends uh, very, very nicely. All right, so that is the advanced landscape material for Unreal Engine 5. Hopefully you find this useful.